Okay, so in this video we will be looking at <clears throat> the SEC 2016 Paper 2, Question 8. Now this is a trig graphs question, but there's also a little bit of differentiation thrown in, or well, there could be a little bit of differentiation thrown in. So um, if you're focusing on this for just trig graphs, and uh, that's brilliant, but there, there will be a little bit that I might skip over as well. So the height of water in a port was measured over a period of time. The average height was found to be 1.6 meters. So that's going to be the midway line is going to be 1.6 meters. So before we go and actually answer the questions, it is good to try and visualize the question. So this is going to be a height of 1.6. The height measured in meters, H of T was modeled by using the function. So again, y is equal to a plus b cos c of t, where t is our variable. So it's important what we know each of a, b, and c influence. A influences the midway line. So we can see that a is the midway line. b influences the amplitude, that is how far above and how far below the graph, um, or the, uh, how far above and below the midway line our graph will go. So it'll go 1.5 above, which will bring us up to 3.1, and it'll go 1.5 below, which will bring us down to 0 0.1. C influences the period. Okay. Now, answering the first question, well, actually, sorry, it's a cost curve. So where does cost start? Cost does not start on the midway line. Cost starts below the midway line. So our cost curve, sorry, cost starts off the midway line is what I meant to say. Depending on what B is, it might start above and it might start below. So because B is positive, it starts above the midway line. If B was negative, it would start below the midway line. This distance here is the period, how long one full oscillation takes. And as I said, C influences the period. The period is defined as being 2 pi over c. So the period in this case is going to be 2 pi all over pi over 6. And the period works out to be 12 hours. The range then, the range is how far up and how far down it goes. So we start at the smallest number, so it's going to be at uh, 0 0.1. We write it with square brackets, 0 0.1, and it goes all the way up to 3.1. Find the maximum height of the water in the port. That seems a bit silly because we've already answered it. It goes all the way up to 3.1 meters. Okay, moving on then. Find the rate at which the height of water is changing when t is equal to 2, correct, two decimal places. So if you haven't done differentiation, you're going to ignore this question, question C. I just want to take down the question. H of t is equal to 1.6, 1.5. H of t is equal to 1.6 plus 1.5 cos pi over 6 t. So as I said, if you haven't done differentiation, just skip on further into the video. So find the rate at which the height of water is changing when t is equal to 2, correct, two decimal places. What's that, at? What's that looking for us to find is h dash of t, that is the first derivative of t. Okay, the 1.6 is going to disappear, and we need to remember how to differentiate the, uh, the trigonometry part of it. Okay? I always say when differentiating trigonometry, diff the angle. So differentiate the angle, then differentiate the trig, and then leave the angle alone, as in repeat the angle. So it's going to be 1.5 times the differentiation of the angle. Now, if this was 7t and you differentiated it, you'd just get 7. If it was uh, 9t and you differentiated it, you'd just get 9. Well, pi over 6 is just a number. So when we differentiate pi over 6t, you just get pi over 6. Cos goes to minus signs with the minus at the front. Sine pi over 6t 
and we want to find this when t is equal to 2. So you'd go h of t, h of 2 is equal to minus 1.5 pi over 6 sine pi over 6 by, one, uh, by 2, isn't it? t is 2 by 2. We can type this entire thing into our calculator. Just make sure that your calculator is in radians. The reason we want to make sure it's in radians is because pi is referenced and because these questions are generally in radians. And we get minus 0 0.68 when we put that into our calculator. So what's that in context is that the height is decreasing by 0 0.68 meters per hour when t is equal to 2. The minus just means that it's decreasing. If a question involves volume, then we'd say the volume was decreasing, but this is in height. So when the question then asks us to explain this in context, so in context, again, what does this mean? You'd fill that in here into your explanation. Height is decreasing at 0 0.68 meters per hour at t equals 2. Okay, next question then. Uh, on a particular day, the high tide occurred at midnight, t is equal to 0. Use the function to complete the table and show uh, the height h of t of the water between midnight and the following midnight. Okay, well, if the period was 12 hours, so it's 6, 8, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. The period was 12 hours, and it began at its maximum height because it's a cos. Remember, it starts, if I had 3, it starts up here and then comes down. It looks something like this. It starts at its max height. And even at that, if you put 0 in for t, you'd get the max height, so 3.1. When will it also be at that max height? It'll be at that max height 12 hours later because the period was 12 and another 12 hours later. So in context again of what it's going to look like on the graph, oops. we know across here 3.1, it'll never go above this line. Okay, what else? Now that's not perfect, I'm gonna draw that in again. There, that's a bit better. What else? Okay, so when will it be at its lowest point? Well, it'll be at its lowest point halfway between high tide and the very next high tide. So when is the next high tide? Well, we said high tide was between zero and 12. So halfway between that, it'll be at its lowest point, which is 0 0.1. And again, 0 0.1 here. And then halfway between high tide and low tide, it'll be at its medium, which was 1.6. Again, 1.6, 1.6, and 1.6. So that 3.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 1.6 are really important. I'm going to have to zoom out a bit to actually draw in the graph, but at 0 0.1 never going to go below that line and also the 1.6 so 1.1 1.2 1.3 1.4 1.5 1.6 okay so zooming out i knew it starts at its highest point because it's a cost curve the next time it'll be back there it's a positive cost curve so I know it starts at its highest point. Next time it'll be back at its highest point was at midday, and then again back to it at midnight. So filling in the information from the graph, that's done, that's done, and that's done. Let's do lowest height will be at 6 and 18. So lowest height will be at 6, and the next 6. And then when will it be halfway between highest and lowest would be 3. 
here, 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 and here. So I'd recommend doing this in pencil in case you make any mistakes. And those black lines done in a light pencil. So now it's not just a matter of connecting the dots. Remember, our graphs shouldn't look like that. That's that's horrible. It shouldn't look like that. It's a curve. Okay, so we want it to be curvy. Best bit of advice I could give you is to not look at your pencil. Look, oh no. Don't look at your pencil, look at where your pencil wants to go. So look at the next dot. Look at the next dot always. Nearly there, I'm gonna pause here. Now the graph should never double back on itself. It should never look anything like that. A function should never have a vertical line, cut it, more than once okay should never have a vertical line that cuts the graph more than once and the last section again we want to make sure it's curvy is it perfect no is it not bad yes it's just a little bit hard on a computer screen like this okay so the next question then find from your sketch the difference in water height between low tide and high tide Okay, well, what's the difference between 3.1 and 0 0.1 is 3 meters, is the difference between the highest and the lowest. And again, you can read that off your graph from 3.1 minus 0 0.1. Okay. Uh, a fully loaded barge enters the port, unloads its cargo, and departs some time later. The fully loaded barge requires a minimum water level of 2 meters. When the barge is unloaded, it only requires 1.5 meters. Use your graph to estimate the maximum amount of time that the barge can spend in the port without resting on the seabed. Okay, well, we wouldn't want the port, or the barge, you would not want the barge to enter in any of this time. The reason why is because we're assuming it's going to, well, once it gets past this time, it would start once it gets past three-ish, it would start resting on the bottom. So that's not good enough. Okay, We would want it to enter, enter just as the water is about to come over the two meter height. And we want it to leave just before it goes back down. So now the graph's not perfect, but well, if I zoom in, what times does this relate to? So, two meters is this gray line straight across, come straight down. We're looking at there, and this next one is there. So, between 9.15 and 3.15, so roughly speaking, it enters at around 9.15 a.m. and leaves at approximately 3.15 p.m. And that's six hours, okay? Now, look, I've, as I said, it's not the best graph in the world, it's not terrible. But uh, this could be off by a little bit, but uh, we're going to have a look at the marking scheme now and see. So Mark's going for the question. Five marks for the first part. Really nice, easy five marks. Easy again. Five marks to give the max height, so it's basically the same question. Question that's probably a bit difficult for fifth years, I would imagine. Maybe only at the end of fifth year you might have gone and done differentiation. Nice little five marks for the rate. Uh, probably be more associated with paper one than paper two. Um, graphing question, 10 marks. Should easily be picked up. And where are we getting to then? Sorry, excuse me, filling in the table was 10 marks. The graph is another 10 marks. 
5 marks for the difference and what 5 hours and 45 minutes approximately what did we say 6 hours approximately that's not bad it's from a graph on a computer like this quite difficult so that's a perfect answer for 5 marks so actually a really really nice graph question um, other ones uh, tied questions like that are very very common other questions that are really worth looking at would be a question involving a ferris wheel going around and i'll probably do another video on that um, so do have a look i'll probably put this in the 2016 playlist but i think i'll probably make a playlist for a trig as well and um, so hopefully you found this helpful anyways